What game do you get when you combine space exploration mechanics of Elite Dangerous or No Man's Sky with the sandbox building mechanics of Space Engineers and then maroon the player on a strange alien world where they are forced to survive? You get a game that most space and sci-fi gamers know nothing about. You get the hidden gem that is Empyreon Galactic Survival. Now I've had this game and played it periodically over the last couple of years. It has been periodically updated and improved, and I'm still learning various aspects of it. But what shocks me is that Empyreon is not as popular or as well known as the other games I just mentioned, at least not yet. Sometimes I think the creators of this game have no marketing department, and they may also be working on a small budget, and yet, here is a game that I enjoy playing very much. When you combine survival, exploration, and the potential for creativity so neatly, you get something that you keep coming back to over and over again, as every playthrough is very different from the previous one. Let's talk about each of these gameplay aspects, survival, exploration, and creative building in turn. The survival mode of the game, which is the core of the game, lets you pick from a number of starter planets. These range anywhere from temperate planets like our own, to desert planets like Luke Skywalker's Tatooine, to extremely alien planets with all kinds of strange flora and fauna, and most of it wants to kill you in the higher difficulty levels. You crash land in an escape pod with just a few things to keep you alive. From there you forage, explore, hunt, and try to stay alive. There's dozens of ways you can die at this point. Obviously you can die of starvation. Dangerous life forms like these velociraptors, yeah I guess velociraptors are transplanted through the galaxy, will try to kill you, but you can kill them back and take their meat. There are other problems though. You cannot just go on eating raw meat without getting stomach issues which will eventually kill you, so you gotta find a way to cook your food. You can die of bleeding, broken bones that lead to infection, poison, radiation, venom, and even alien parasites, all of which can be cured if you can forge the right things for it such as herbal leaves or find the right medical treatment but yeah that's not always easy oh yeah don't forget dying from extreme heat or cold plus on most starter planets the bad guys of the game namely the Xerax Empire have outposts so they may be hunting you too with drones or patrol ships but do not fear you can gather the resources to build a nice little house or base you can either manually place the blocks and items, or use a stored blueprint to spawn the base after gathering the materials depending on the server conditions. Of course the Xerax may try to attack and take over your little base, but that's where defensive turrets come in. You may want to make hover vehicles or small vessels of all types to mine, hunt, or continue exploring the planet, as usually you'll find all kinds of interesting things, both helpful and unhelpful, and sometimes just plain weird. Oh, please, what is that? Don't tell me. Now, if you're playing on a multiplayer server, the settings of that server may wipe the starter planet periodically. That means your base, hover vehicles, ships, all of it will go away after a week or two. So normally the goal on a multiplayer server is to try to get off the starter planet and find a new home as soon as possible. But on most starter planets there are starter missions you can do for credits, reputation, experience points, or as a way of learning the game. And now for the exploration aspects. On the server I currently play on, here is the planet map on our ocean planet here. And here is the solar system map. You can see here that there is a barren planet rich in minerals, two ice or snow planets, and various asteroid belts. My friends and I have pretty much fully explored everything in this system. Here is the interstellar space around my home system. And out further here are all the stars with other planets that we can go to and visit. The starter planets on the server are over here. That is the area where everyone got their start, built their capital ship, and set out to explore the galaxy. Although some newbies were helped off the starter planets before the wipe. You see, you must have a ship classed as a CV or capital vessel to warp between star systems using an interstellar warp drive. My own Corvette here has an upgraded advanced warp drive, and as you can see, it is quite large. Capital vessels can be small, or not much bigger than, say, the Millennium Falcon, or they can be carrier-sized in several hundred meters in length or width. Now, each of these star systems has a planetary system in every planet you can visit, 
Some have no danger and some are quite dangerous. There is a lot to explore and find out there. Even though there are tens of thousands of star systems on most servers, this is not a shallow ocean. You can go on various missions, scavenger hunts, and various things to help you figure out the overall mysteries of the Andromeda Galaxy. You can hunt down bounties, pirates, Xerax, or even go pirate yourself and attack one of the trade factions. You can trade. Some people have kept entire spreadsheets on station locations and whatnot. You can run planetary sites that have been infested with legacy infestations. Very icky and terrifying stuff goes on, but very nice loot or salvage can be found there. Or if you are hardworking, you can do nothing but mine resources and everyone will be your best friend because they'll be able to come to you for all their rare and complex builds. Sometimes even capital ships are custom built to do nothing but be the best mining ships they can be. To do all this, you need to have a few ships, vehicles, and a station or two to help you out, and that is where the creativity aspects come into play. There are a number of pre-built ship, base, and vehicle blueprints that come stock with the game. Some are great, some not so much. You can design something on your own in creative mode. This is the feature that is something like Space Engineers, although the building in this game doesn't have quite the detail level of Space Engineers. However, the difference is that you can build something that is functional in a working environment or galaxy and go on adventures with it there. Or you can build something purely for aesthetic value. I try to do both. For example, this Osprey Rapid Response Corvette that I designed is to actually play the game with. It is built for three things, combat, exploration, and occasionally rescuing people in need. This is not a mining ship. It is also mostly a shield tanker, not a structure or armor tanker. This frees up the design, which is built to be highly maneuverable, able to turn quickly and bring advanced lasers to bear on a target, and then rapidly escape when needed. It also has a hangar bay on the bottom that I can easily get my vehicles in and out of, or rescue refugees, meaning other players who might be in need. Of course, the sick bay is down there in the hangar bay, so that if you do have a broken leg or something, you can easily reach the sick bay and get fixed up. What's cool about this is that hundreds of players have also made such builds and saved them as blueprints, who often share them on the Steam Workshop. So if you don't like any of the stock blueprints, you can go to Steam and download someone else's creation to try them out. Of course, since I am already an accomplished Starship designer, I make most of my own stuff. One thing is for certain though when it comes to this game, Murphy's Law applies. Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong eventually. You must be prepared. Can it be that I will warp into a planet sector and a big scary Xerox Dreadnought is waiting for me right there at the warp in point? Oh yes. This is where I hope that I have enough speed and enough shielding to survive its barrage and get away. Believe me, others have failed here, so it serves us well to be prepared for that. The thing is, for that reason, Imperion is a hilarious game. In no other game can I forget that my capital ship is still hovering 150 feet above the ground, and walk out of the hangar, fall, and break both of my legs. In no other game can I ask a buddy to drop me off on some gorgeous planet so that I can just go camping or hunting for a few days. This game is also heavily moddable. Every server is different. Some are PvP, some are not. Some have thousands of stars, some do not. Some have extra story and plot additions, like the new Eden mod. The server I play on is a reforged Eden server, so it is large and has extra plots and stories from the new Eden mod, but it is also a bit harder and balanced in a way to prolong the progression in the game from the reforged mod, which is what I like because for me, too easy is boring. In fact, many of the blueprints on Steam are designed specifically for the reforged Eden mod. One thing is for sure, Imperion has loads of personality to it. It isn't perfect, still has some bugs, and it used to have a hell of a lot more hilariously entertaining bugs, but even the bugs are kind of endearing to me. This game is good, and yet it lacks a lot of the polish of a major corporate game publisher, which may explain why the game is not well known or well marketed. However, I love the scrappy kind of whimsical nature of the game, which doesn't seem to be designed to really make a profit or tick any of the AAA title checkboxes, but simply to be a fun game to play, and that's it. 
This game has sucked up a lot of my time, so I thought I should put some of that to use and actually make a video about it. No, I'm not shielding for the game or sponsored by them at all. I simply really enjoy playing it and wanted to share my thoughts about it. Well, thank you for watching, Space Friends. Until next time.